So we started the series with three Warcraft 3 archers that had the same skills and traits. With the help of a clear healer we enslaved in episode 1, we did some raiding and found two of these orbs of conviction which I said we were going to use in episode 2. We're now going to scour the map for the perfect colonist to use the orb of conviction on. I'm thinking we're going to head over to this god faction colony. Along the way there is also a thrumkin colony that could have some good thrumkins. I'm not sure about these other factions if there is going to be good people there. We could check them out too. And along the way if we do run into any scouting parties or trade caravans we can try to use the item on them as well and we could also try to get some more loot from this trading caravan for example which I believe we can attack from where we are right now and there's only one guard here by the looks of it so this should be pretty free although the loot here does not really seem worth it like there is some silver but we have plenty of silver and the best thing is like this masterwork hyperweave backpack that actually doesn't improve with improved quality it does have an enchant on it but this enchant is really not that good they also have some extra food here but we still have like 900 pemmican left so we don't really care too much about that this unrefined magicite is pretty decent but we can't use it just yet as we don't have the tech to make anything with it and as far as the rest of this stuff yeah there's really nothing here that is really worth the risk of the blood moon since we're still in a blood moon the storyteller can send werewolves to this tile and he will send a ton so we just got to get the heck out of here this was not worth it we're going to try to head over here to the east but i think we're going to get ambushed by the scouting party and i'd rather not fight them because i do believe we could get ambushed by werewolves while we're fighting these guys we're just going to try to avoid fighting really anything for now Looks like this caravan did just get ambushed over here and no one wins i guess everyone just got taken out okay and already the blood moon is finally over now we can move around the map and not be too scared about that we can still run into like this 303 combat power scouting party which it says 123 next to it i think it was wounded because i did see it get into a battle and okay it got caught again by another scouting party and they both got taken out i guess and we got another one coming here with 175 combat power we're just gonna head to the east and not worry about whatever faction this was i want to go directly to the god faction and then like hit up every settlement along the way and try to recruit one of those guys before hopefully being able to just come back home and set up our base because i want to be prepared for the next blood moon i think it's too risky to be wandering around the map when there's a blood moon going on and if we can successfully beat the blood moon you can get a lot of loot from it i do remember randomly some werewolves would have that gift of piercing buff and i think when you kill them you get a totem but yeah we're almost here at bone bleed ruins it's a demon colony is there anyone we want to recruit like commander but can't do social well i've only seen two casters so far yeah i'm just gonna mark the people i looked over it looks like one of their slaves actually rebelled this super soldier it's probably the best one out of all of them to be honest and these guys are now attacking us why it looks like we have to get the heck out of here and yeah i'm not seeing any demon princes unfortunately but yeah so that one didn't pan out onwards towards the god faction we're gonna hit up this medieval colony next i'm not sure what this infested and lax settlement is it's the manic hive faction i don't know exactly which faction race that is but we'll hit that up too looks like the scouting party's heading our way it's actually returning back to this base but it might run into us or maybe not no we're good looks like a lot of the caravans are using this opportunity to do some night travel and they're well a lot of them are actually resting now. A lot of caravans over here though to the west. It's kind of a shame that we're not over there. Be a lot of free loot. But yeah, we made it over here and uh, see what these guys got. So first thing I'm noticing about attacking this base is a couple of them are heading down towards us. Are they trying to attack us? Elemental Gunner Sylvanas is blessing but cannot shoot. A Star Seeker is a fledgling mage with incredible potential but they can't do anything. They can eat really fast and do research I guess. They don't have any passions for intellectual though so no thanks. Kolpi's not a caster. Inte does have Emotep's Wisdom, a good medic trait but we already have a medic. Already well onwards towards this whatever fashion this is and there's a caravan actually heading kind of towards us. We might want to try to intercept them first actually now I think about it. And I think we can actually attack them from kind of far away. Oh uh, we actually were able to attack them from that far. So they have two Thrumkins. Thrumkins have good base stats, so it would be good to pick up one of them, but like this guy sucks. This person also is not a caster. Portable hologram relay. Allows the user to project a friendly hologram whose consciousness is located far away. Fallen soldiers are routinely revived as holograms so their training can serve the cause. Interesting. I'm not really seeing anything too good. Oh, here we go. Titan Ancient Mail has an enchant on it that increases energy, energy regen, increases energy cost though as well, but increases arcane resist and has a 50% chance to deal 20% bonus damage. The bear is beset by nightmares that slowly break mental resist. Oh, it increases mental break threshold. This thing's really not that good, I think. Gives very little protection as well. And, okay, there's more mufflos down here. Scrap ninja mask. Mm, none of this stuff looks good. Mechanite pants are good, actually. They increase movement speed and give some protection, but that's, like, the only thing, I think. Well, actually, this mini turret pack's pretty cool. It will just shoot at whatever we shoot at. So the way we're gonna approach this is we're gonna get pretty close to this little runes over here, and we can get cover in this runes. And and these guys do have pretty long range like they have recur bows neither guy has a great bow but they're really bad at shooting they have like one and two shooting actually let's have one of our archers pull out the semi rifle and then let's try to 
just piss them off and send them towards us. Okay, wait, was coming, but yeah, wait, just gave up. Meanwhile, in the top left corner of our map, by the way, Crab is taming. Uh, there's like six horses on the map. We need ammo pens, looks like, for these animals. We might actually stay here for a while, at least so we can recruit the prisoner that we captured. I wonder if we can archer three, just run in, because they do have a shield. Just start using the warp block pistol. Even if she gets hit, I don't think it will break the shield. I think about it. She has five extra primitive ammo, but then she has some on her bow too. She got hit twice there, but it hasn't even broken through the shield really at all. So yeah, I think we're fine. We can have these guys come in too, because they're aggroed on Archer 3. And, uh, okay, let's just charge this thing. I hit again, but that's fine. Keep aiming white. Yeah, her shield's down to 59, but... Okay, nice, we knocked out white. And I did notice that white does have 16 medical, but our slave with their increased medical stats might actually be better at doing medical stuff than white. I'm not really sure how that's gonna work, but yeah, these uh, muffalo, where's the other ones? Oh, here they are. So this one has the chitin ancient male, which I don't know if I care about. I want the turret though, I think that'd be really cool. Poisonous longbow, I kind of want that. So these three, I want to take them out. And these. Archer three, get close to this yellow muffalo. Oh wait, we took one out already, very nice. The green one has the chitin. Let's take the green one out for the plates. Nice shots. Just keep aiming it, everyone. And keep going. And there we go, we knocked out that one with the ancient plates. And then meanwhile, there is one more muffalo. I think it might have left though. There should be two more muffalo. I think they got out. And so yeah, we're just gonna chill here for a bit. We set up a temporary base and I made a pen for these horses. There was like six of them, I wanna say. We tamed a few of them. And I don't think Crab failed taming on any of them. So I actually don't know the chance to tame them, but they're not very wild. Looks like we tamed four of them that I can see at least. Or I guess five. And we do have to rope them all in or they will leave eventually. There are a couple more horses on the map, but I think we'll just go with these. I think we're gonna keep crab in this room until we decide to leave. I'm 0 0.9 to 0.5 will, so we need to talk to a guardsman twice more, I guess, to enslave them. But yeah, we're gonna keep crab locked in this room until we decide to leave. Reason being is we need to suppress them better. Weapon proximity is lowering their slave rebellion interval. We need to take all the weapons off, I guess. And yeah, after dropping all their weapons, they do have a slave rebellion interval of 46 days. If we do a better job of suppressing her next time, I have a mod that makes it so I believe if we go above 60% suppression, then she cannot rebel. Whereas normally there's just like a random chance that the slaves will just rebel and they'll try to leave or whatever the horses are doing it in the prisoner room how did they even get in here there we go suppressing up to 73 percent okay yeah so there's no chance that they rebel and now we can just let them go around and do whatever in the meantime since crab suppression is now at 72 percent we can have her go around and tame whatever is on the map there's one more mare and then there's a night saber we could try to tame this it's a mount from the rimcraft mod it has a really high value and does not do that much damage so if it does revenge on tame fail which there is a chance they can do that 25 percent actually we can just take it out pretty easy so yeah we'll do that once it wakes up and here we go we're about to try to tame the night saber we did end up enslaving a guardsman and yeah everyone get over here just in case this goes poorly we might need to uh help crab out there's a chance that nothing happens and it doesn't revenge and we tamed it very nice i don't know what the chance of that was actually 75 percent wild and a handling skill requirement of seven so i feel like it must have been around like a 50 percent chance but yeah, i have no idea how tanky this thing is it has a value of 1k though so i'm guessing it's decent but yeah with that we're able to get out of there and after taming up all these horses and the night saber our carrying capacity is extremely high now we can also have people mount these animals and i do believe we get movement speed bonus on the map if everyone is mounted Okay, well, I'm glad I saved before doing that. Our caravan <laughs> animals were lost that we mounted. Yeah, check the Giddy Up mod page, the mod where it allows you to mount animals. And that guy was saying that you shouldn't have slaves mount when you're on a caravan. Or at least that's what I got from his comment. So yeah, we'll try again later and we'll try to not have the slaves mount. We'll see if that improves our movement speed. It says we have 160% multiplier for ridden animals though. So I think we are actually riding our animals right now. We're just moving really slow because we're on mountainous terrain. And yeah, we're heading into this infested settlement. And it's just the insect faction. There's a megapede over here. And then we got the insectoid queen. I'm not seeing any loot. And like there could be in some of these rooms, but we're kind of on a time crunch here. I'm just trying to find some really good colonists to convert. And yeah, the less time we're on the map, the less chance we have of being ambushed by a really strong scouting party by the looks of it. So this is a scouting party from the god faction with the combat power of 484. I'm thinking that means there's two gods because I think each one of them is worth like 250 points. And I think we're just going to avoid it for now. I was originally thinking we're going to go to the Thrumkin colony and then hit up this colony and then the god faction. And yeah, I think we're just going to continue with that plan because if we do run into these guys and like say they're too strong, we can't run away. Like we have to fight. So yeah, we'll just let them continue on their way and we'll head into the Thrumkin colony and we'll see if there's any good Thrumkins here. 
And never mind on that one, none of them were even really worth talking about. So we're just going to move on to this trading caravan from the infantry division, which I'm guessing is going to be guarded by gunmen. So the game still thinks we're in the Thrumkin base tile until we fully move to the next tile. And here we're able to attack the caravan from the Thrumkin base, which makes the caravan take over the base. Despite this caravan only having one pack animal and one guard, like there's no way they could have taken it out. And so yeah, I reloaded to before we attack the caravan and we're just going to head back to the Thrumkin base, which we can do instantly and still to this day, I kind of get confused sometimes because like if we were to split someone off from this caravan like archer one for example they get teleported back to where we started from it's as if we have not moved at all plus if we merge them i'm actually not sure what would happen okay they merge back to this main caravan also we can immediately go back to this thrumkin tile i guess we have to offer them gifts no if we click here maybe it will go back okay yeah so it goes back instantly so we're back at this thrumkin tile as if we were never trying to move into the mountain and that was taking us a while if we move towards the road it's only going to take well, not that long as you can see. Once we fully get on the road, okay, let's actually move this way a little bit just to make sure. But once you're in the middle, I'm pretty sure you're now considered in that tile. But it will attack the caravan again, and we should be able to attack it from, okay, yeah. It's just being guarded by one Mincho Royal, who is a Deadeye class. Unfortunately, they have no passions for shooting though. As far as a loot, nothing too good on here. This armor is enchanted though. With, it doesn't actually say. It's made out of demon hide though, and that gives it harmony armor, which is like magic resist. On top of 92% sharp protection, that's quite a bit. So that wouldn't be bad to pick up, and this last one has some silver and mainly food that we need i guess the weather is a monsoon which makes us really slow and lowers the range weapon accuracy i'm guessing and this mean show also does not have a range weapon so it's kind of just target practice but we're not gonna be that accurate as far as which muffler we want to take out we actually do not care about that one although it does have 113 honey on it that's apparently fun to eat so maybe we should actually take that one out i definitely could see a rework of the caravan design potentially do keep in mind though it is a mod and just the fact that there is a caravan system in the game is already incredible enough. And yeah, the way I see this is kind of like we're farming right now. And the longer the game progresses, the harder our raids are going to get with Rimmor. So though we're getting this stuff kind of for free, and you guys are just not hitting shots at all. This Minko is really tanky. Slime Torso has 120 HP. Well, this thing's apparently a Micho Royal, and I'm not sure what that means exactly. Like their value is not higher than a normal Micho, I don't think. It doesn't actually say here what the Royal is exactly, but it might be like a higher tier Micho that we're fighting right now. Because yeah, I don't remember them being that tanky. Like we're just hitting this thing so hard and is not being phased 75 hp on the head that's insane maybe we should go to the micho faction and get one of those guys but yeah as the game progresses and once we do finally set up our base rimor is going to be sending us massive raids because we've been spending a lot of time just on the road good lord dude this thing is just tanking holy cow we put it out of its misery it dropped five minchoko Nice, we took that Mufflo out. I'm not sure if this one's trying to run to the edge or what it's trying to do exactly. Mufflo are pretty easy to hit though. They are pretty large. And there we go. And alrighty, onwards to the God Faction. I'm not even sure if you're supposed to spawn this at the start of the game because I have noticed my map gen has been messing up a bit. I feel like half the time when I try to generate a map with this God Faction on it, it will crash. And I'm not sure if this is the faction that's causing it or if this is the cause of it. But here's the God Faction. So each of them are supposed to have a God trait, but if they're a caster, they will not have a God trait. Like this guy's a Killian, which is a God trait. He wouldn't be bad, but like he's a coward. Herculean and tough. This is a person that we'd want, I think. This could be our carry tumber. And if it does fail, there's no point of doing this whole thing anyways okay here we go we're in range don't line a sight though we have line of sights and it was resisted so that's all pointless so doing this costed all of crab's mana but our other caster has an ability that increases mana regen it only took about a day for her mana to come back to full and then we tried again on these guys and it did not work this demigod faction has zero percent psychic sensitivity and i believe this item does require the target to have psychic sensitivity because it says when it converts someone it makes them go into psychic shock but i believe you're immune to that if you have no psychic sensitivity that all being said we headed north and hit up the scaven colony they did not have anyone and then we did a caravan battle with this thrumkin trader we're gonna let Archer 3 just pretty much solo this, give them increased accuracy. And that one's dead. I actually don't know what's on these animal, uh, caravan animal things. Right, Archer 3 is just unloading with that lowered aiming time. Oh, <laughs> increased shooting accuracy. That's actually kind of nuts. We give them increased movement. We gotta get a bit closer. Oh, that stallion just got taken out. I don't even know what was on it. Let's see what was on it. Double strand fatigues are actually pretty good. Some of the room effect mod. I'm not sure how they got a hold of those, being that they are Thrumkins. But yeah, Archer 3 over here and finish off these other horsies. This one's gonna make it out. I think it's going for the edge. Come on, Archer 3, get it. Oh, we got it. Nice. 
Oh, and we took it out. I kind of like doing it this way. I have no idea what's on these things. Architect Mass Deathcap Spear has a really high value, but it is not that good. Architect Mass is extremely good for like walls. It has very high HP. It actually does increase sharp damage by quite a bit and lowers melee cooldown slightly. So it is okay to make into weapons. It just has a really high value. So that's pretty much it for the trade caravan loot. We next hit up this Shek colony and they didn't really have anyone that we wanted, but this Quartian colony had someone that was really good. Prexony does not have any passions for shooting, unfortunately, but fast learner increase their learning rate and they're tough which lowers incoming damage and a sharpshooter class so they'd be kind of like a tanky sharpshooter i guess on top of that quartians do have what looks like double the hp on their body parts and their base values increased by quite a bit to make up for it 3500 they are really slow their base movement speed is 2.4 but they do have increased psychic sensitivity so there is a pretty good chance that the item will work on them and they get quite a bit of increased mining speed 400 percent i guess although this one only has one in mining so they actually can't really mind that well. So we were hoping that Praxini, the Quartzian that we were going to try to steal, would patrol over towards us. And as we were trying to get an angle on them, they decided to attack us. On the dromedary that Crab's mounted on has its front right hoof shot off. It's moving at 50% only. That's why Crab's moving so slow. Bloodjet over here is a chain warden and they're actually moving very fast. They're moving at 4.4 because they have two god traits, which is like unheard of. If we want to do this, I think we're going to have to kill Bloodjet. Like I'm almost certain that's going to have to be the case. Okay, you know what? We're just going to commit to this. Crab is going to use the Orb of Conviction on Prexony, which will end up knocking Crab out, and that is going to be okay. We got the recruits. Did they get knocked out with Psychic Shock? Yeah, they have Psychic Shock, so we're going to have to retrieve them. And Crab's probably going to be knocked out too once this cast finishes. Wait, Crab's not knocked out. They have Arcane Weakness severely ill this time. It's not Catatonic. Okay, that's amazing. Crab, you're going to have to leave. We need to increase accuracy on Archer 3. And we need to try to kill Bloodjet, I think. Oh, the Chain Warden class, I think is pretty strong. Like, if it gets too close, I do you believe it will use an ability to get on us? I'll unfire at will. Oh, we just hit the freaking Dromedary. Okay, Archer 1 just leave and then all the animals I think are going to leave. What the heck is that? A Mana Mine? One of them just used a Mana Mine. It was not us, though. Oh my lord. Mana Explosion hit Bloodjet's leg. Okay, that's good for us. You guys gotta run. We gotta freaking hit this stupid Chain Warden thing. Maybe Archer 2 just dip. Crab needs to dip. Like, you need to get out of there. Nice, we actually killed their caster guy. Okay, so Archer 3 is gonna keep kiting, and she's actually way quicker than all of them. As long as they don't have any really long-range casters, then we're fine. Meanwhile, we sent back in Archer 1, and they're, I think, gonna mount the animal, or did it leave? The Night Saber just left. Whoa, wait, this thing got back up. Okay, so I was trying to do a rescue mission with Archer 1 and the Night Saber, but it just keeps leaving whenever it comes back in. Prexony got back up the dude we're trying to save, and they actually have a stealth ability. I don't think it lasts very long, or I guess if they shoot, it doesn't last very long, but maybe we can just have them Shadow Slayer, stealth, and just run? Just walk right out of here? That'd be amazing. It lasts for one hour. That's going to be enough time, I think, to get out. I completely forgot that class had that ability. But yeah, everyone is going to be able to make it out. 